thank you very much, Karina, and thanks everything, everyone for coming. Uh, I do want to present this work, even though all of us, of course, uh, worked on it. It's, it's really Yurong's uh, PhD work, and I, I just want to promote her as one of our star PhD students at the University of Illinois, so watch out for her. Um, she is online, but as you know, the interaction's a little bit delayed, so uh, during the Q&A, if you can be patient, because she knows the work much better than, than the rest of us. Uh, all that said, I'm uh, proud and honored to be um, a co-author with Yurong and to be presenting our work. Um, we're a group of scholars from the School of Information Sciences at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and uh, this presentation is preliminary findings from comparing reader reviews of classic literature by users on Goodreads, which is based in the U.S., and Dubon Books, which is based in China. First of all, uh, a broad overview of our research background. Due to the lack of historical records on reading, many aspects of readership studies remain, have remained theoretical or anecdotal until the 21st century when we have lots of digital stuff. In the last two decades, the abundance of user-generated book reviews online has filled this gap and created unprecedented opportunities for empirical research on readers, books, and reading activities. These are a few selected studies, uh, readership studies. Um, as you will see, if you can read the fine print, empirical findings based on user-generated book reviews have enriched and advanced our understanding of book sales, reader behavior, literary genres, and folksonomies. New methodological frameworks have also emerged from these existing studies. Among all of these um, related research projects, we are particularly interested in leveraging user-generated book reviews to better understand everyday readers' perceptions of literary genre. Taking as example the classics, that's always in quotes when we talk about it here, one of the most frequently discussed genres among literary scholars, book dealers, publishers, and readers, not to mention literary scholars and everyone cares about what's a classic, what's canonical, uh, Melanie Walsh and Marie Antoniak's empirical study of Goodreads reviews revealed that amateur crit critics have curated a rather narrow definition of what classics are than have professionals under the impacts of schooling, industrial, and commercial stakeholders, and algorithmic, algorithmic moderation of e-commerce. So our, um, Walsh and Antoniak's study revealed that, that there's just a difference between amateur readers and professional readers in a wide variety of, uh, of fields. Based on, this, uh, on Walsh's and Antoniak's list of classics curated on Goodreads, we take this line of research further by developing a, a comparative study of cross-cultural classics as curated on Goodreads in the US and Dubon in China. Our research questions are uh, how the classics as curated by amateur readers differ by platform and by ge ge geographical and linguistic background. This question can be broken down into many sub-questions, including, importantly, what tags are used for classifying the, these books, and how do their reader ratings differ against uh, across platforms? These are just two sample questions among many we could ask, um, but th those are the ones we'll focus on today. We believe these questions to be important for advancing research on user-generated book reviews. Previously, the most frequently examined books and readerships are those with distinguished popularity, commercial success, social impact, and scholarly prestige in the Anglophone world, which are subject to historical and social political, I'm sorry, sociocultural biases such as classism, sexism, racism, and colonialism. To expand the current research landscape and to enhance cultural inclusiveness and diversity, as Pianzola and colleagues advocated in their DH 2022 panel last year, multilingual and cross-cultural data sets remain much in need. Following their advice, we are examining the classics as curated by online book reviewers in two cross-cultural scenarios. Here, we, um, dis we describe cross-cultural as meaning, uh, meaning linguistic and geographical differences in user bit platforms, primarily in the US and primarily in China. Um, and to do this, we, we curated uh, a, a comparative data set taking these as proxy for Anglophone and non-Anglophone book review culture. So we do understand that, that it's a big world, it's not just US and China, but these are two available data sets uh, that can give us some interesting preliminary results. Let's zoom in on our data sources and data sets. This table introduces and compares the two platforms, Goodre Goodreads and Dubon. While both platforms are impactful and have large user bases, 
you can see extremely large, nine, approximately 90 million uh, on Goodreads and 196 million on Dubon. Um, they have major differences. For example, coverage of items. Goodreads is only about books or primarily book-centered. Dubon is a large platform with reviews of all sorts of things. So uh, keep this in mind. Uh, this will have an impact later on some of the uh, finer grain statistics. Um, and the commercial dependency. So Goodreads is now affiliated with Amazon, and Dubon is an independent reviewing platform. The Dubon and Goodreads user communities are significantly different as well in geographic and linguistic contexts, and are therefore suitable, or so we claim, for cross-cultural comparisons. So we realize, of course, online, nobody knows you're a dog, right? You could be coming from China or anywhere, but the best studies indicate that there is very, very little overlap, and that the representation, the geographic and linguistic representation is a fairly reasonable one. Uh, Dubon users are based primarily inside the national boundaries of China as well as the greater China region. Uh, in contrast, according to an analysis of the data set of 1.8 million Goodreads users, users based in the Chinese-speaking geographic regions only make up about 0.8%, so less than 1% Chinese-based readers on Goodreads. While users based in the four major English-speaking geographic regions, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia, make up 49% of Goodreads. So it's an uneven distribution, but we take it as a pretty good proxy. For Goodreads classics, we leveraged 144 classics as identified by Walsh and Antoniak based on user shelving and tagging. So again, these are amateur reader-defined classics. For Dubon, we ourselves identified the 141 books that had been on the Dubon Top 250 books list from 2011 to 2021, which were tagged by classics or canonical. We have curated this Dubon Top Books data set for a previous project. So here are some examples of the Goodreads and Dubon classics just for curiosity. And it's fun to see that there is a different, very different um, definition of classics with some overlaps. So, preliminary findings. First, in genre tagging. Uh, we approach this purely qualitatively, the aspect of tags that, use, that readers assign to a particular book. This figure visualizes the distribution of tags marking the two sets of classics reviews as curated on Goodreads and Dubon. Uh, I want to point out that this visualization is a mix of things. The, the word cloud looking things are tags that users use and the um, center portion are titles that are common in the two lists, so that this is not really visualizing the same thing. Um, 23 works in the middle are identified as classics both by Goodreads and Dubon readers. They're not in those top five that I showed previously, but they are common to the two lists. Um, but you see that the tags used to describe the classics are rather different. Uh, the tag clouds show the most frequent user-added tags associated with classics. Uh, blue words on the left are most frequent tags assigned to Goodreads classics, and the orange ones on the right are Dubon classics. And as always with uh, word clouds, the larger the, the font, the, the more frequent the appearance of the tag. For example, we can tell that literature as a tag is frequently used on both platforms for tagging classics. While certain genres or theme tags are exclusively popular on either Dubon, for example, martial arts or manga, or Goodreads, for example, Gothic and dystopia. Here are examples of books tagged with these, uh, with these tags. So we see among the uh, Goodreads classics, The Time Machine and Picture of Dorian Gray, uh, and they relate to dystopian and gothic tags, whereas Dragon Ball and Heavenly Sword and the Dragon Saber relate to martial arts and manga, and they are tagged among the Goodreads classics. Uh, such differences in tagging indicate that there are divergent interests in classics across Goodreads and Dubon. Uh, and uh, we should note that the Dubon tags are indeed in Chinese. This is an automatic translation process and, uh, and then manually cleaned up. So it's not a, this is a, uh, an exploratory and impressionistic set of tags, not, not a linguistic study or anything like that. So preliminary findings. The next step in our study was to check the differences in overall ratings across the platforms. We analyzed three groups of classics, Dubon exclusives, Goodreads exclusives, and classics that are both on Dubon and Goodreads. The histogram visualizes the distribution of ratings for all three sets of books. And as you can see, overall, Goodreads ratings are lower than Dubon's ratings. 
The table provides more detailed description of the statistics by group. And we confirm here that the classic, across classic groups, Dubon ratings are higher than Goodreads ratings in general, which indicates that Dubon users might have a more po positive attitude about classics. Interestingly, the, the total numbers of ratings also radically differ. The more positive ratings on Dubon might be partially explained by the difference in the total numbers. As the bar chart shows, uh, the orange, it's probably hard to see. There are many, many more ratings on Goodreads than on Dubon. Uh, remember I said that the user base of Dubon is much bigger, but Dubon reviews movies and all sorts of things, so the, it's hard to distinguish which ones, um, what percentage of those ratings belong to books and, uh, and other genres. On average, a classic received about 440,000 more ratings on Goodreads. Larger numbers of ratings might lead to more divergent opinions about the same book. To recap and to present future directions of research, uh, we presented our preliminary findings, mostly descriptive analysis of our case study comparing classics on Dubon and Goodreads. We're doing more analysis, such as kulbeck leibler divergence, to map the difference in distributions of the one to five star ratings of the, for the same books across platforms. Based on empirical evidence, we aim to answer questions such as, what makes, classic, what makes a classic for a particular reader community, and how does that, uh, how do those features differ among the communities. Um, our data set, we acknowledge, is fairly limited in size. There are practical reasons of why the uh, size of the corpus is limited compared to other computationally collected data sets. There are differences in technical infrastructure and permissions, and we are slowly enlarging the data set from this pilot study. So we're not drawing any decisive or general conclusions about cross-cultural reception, but just uh, pointing the way for some exploration. And these are references which you can't read, but which we can make available. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>